Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining Veeam today. My name is Jeff Reichert. I work in the office of the CTO at Veeam. This week at the summit, we've heard already about DevOps. We've heard about automation, cloud native architecture, and artificial intelligence and machine learning topics. Today in the security track, Veeam will review data security concerns around two important areas, O365 and ransomware. As with the rest of the summit this week, my focus on both these questions will be on how Veeam's solutions are cloud centric and enable you in moving to a more cloud focused infrastructure. And of course, as with the whole rest of the summit, there's a very good reason for that. We're in the middle of a historic transition. We're actually pretty far down the path. In the past 15 years, we've seen movement through consolidated data centers to virtualization, then to private cloud, and today's overwhelmingly hybrid cloud, multi-cloud landscape. As workloads moved out of the data center, our customers' requirements changed here at Veeam, of course, and they changed from data management to cloud data management. And that informs everything that we do here at Veeam. Our vision at Veeam is to be the most trusted provider of backup solutions that enable cloud data management. Now, there's three parts to that. Backup is what we do. Your data has to be safe before you can move on, before you can move it to new platforms, do new things with it. Trusted goes with backup. If I have to restore my data, chances are circumstances aren't perfect. I might be a victim of ransomware. I might be experiencing some other kind of outage or even a natural disaster. And I need to trust I can get my data back when I need it. Cloud data management might not be so clear. And that's what we'll define next. But Veeam is confident that as you all go on this journey to the cloud, we can achieve this vision to be the leader in cloud data management. And there's a reason for that. Our customers have turned to us to lead the market in protecting their data through the whole innovation timeline that we just discussed. Veeam was the leader in protecting virtual data, first with VMware and then with other hypervisors. As hypervisors evolved into private cloud capabilities and data centers, we led the market and still do in providing high availability for private clouds. And as we've moved into the whole public cloud, hybrid cloud environment, we're leading in helping getting customers data safely into that environment and protecting it once it's moved up there as well. To define cloud data management, cloud data management is the set of outcomes that we deliver to our customers as they make this move into multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. And of course, those outcomes are on the right. It begins with backup and recovery. If your data is not safe, you can't do anything with it. You've got to be sure of that. Cloud mobility is a natural consequence of backup, both because Veeam helps in moving data directly to the cloud, because we've backed up to the cloud for years now, and we've got a lot of cloud mobility capabilities around restoring into multiple clouds, but also for the reason I just mentioned. If you don't know you can get your data safely into and out of the cloud, you can't risk moving there. At Gartner's conference in Barcelona last November, I spoke with a large European and Middle Eastern bank. They've got branches all over Europe and the Middle East. They had successfully completed an O365 pilot. They were ready to move their Exchange, their OneDrive, their SharePoint up into the cloud, but they couldn't do it until a member of, of my director's board, of our customer's board, sat down at the keyboard in the data center and saw for himself that he could restore data on premises. He needed to know that if he moved the data up to the cloud, he could just as safely and securely move it back out of the cloud. And once they showed that, they were free to have cloud mobility to move up to that platform. Of course, automation, monitoring, orchestration, the next two bullets go along with moving to the cloud. If I'm moving my data to new platforms, I need easier ways to manage that, and I need easier ways to monitor where the data is to make sure it's okay. Same conference. Uh, we had the CTO of a large French managed healthcare provider. Eric was on stage for 20 minutes. He spent 15 of those minutes talking about how he used Veeam with Puppet, Chef, and Ansible to automate deployments in his development environment, and then automate the movement of those development environments up into production for his many managed services customers. Veeam is API driven, we have been for years, and so we plug very neatly into automation and orchestration frameworks. And of course, governance and compliance is the natural consequence if you get the rest of it right. 
the reason that our Office 365 customer, the large Europe Middle Eastern bank, needed to see that they could get their data back on premises is that they had to know that if they were faced with an audit, a lawsuit, any kind of regulatory uh, interaction, that they could show auditors, they could show regulators, they could show opposing counsel that they could get data back when they needed it. The tech stack that enables these outcomes is over on the left. Obviously, it starts with backup and with some advanced capabilities like data labs. Monitoring, orchestration, go with that. But the top and bottom of that tech stack are where a lot of Veeam's innovation dollars get spent. The top is the workloads that we protect. The bottom is the storage solutions that we integrate closely with. If you look at those workloads in particular, you'll notice over on the left, we've got all the virtual hypervisors that we protect. And that, of course, is started with VMware. It's now extended to Hyper-V, to Nutanix AHV, and to VMware up on cloud platforms. We'll talk about more that more in a second. Um, cloud platforms, we have native hypervisor level backups for AWS EC2 instances. We have native hypervisor level backups for Azure VMs. We also, I just mentioned, do the extension of VMware into AWS, into Azure, into the Google Cloud VMware environment. So all of those we support as well. Um, software as a service, we are the leading industry solution for O365 backup. We're going to be talking more about that today. And we don't leave out the physical on-premises infrastructure. A lot of our customers have physical servers that are going to be around for a while, and we protect those with agents as well. On the bottom of the stack is the storage integrations that Veeam has. Those are both uh, primary storage, so we orchestrate snapshots, we orchestrate the replication of snapshots, so that if your array, if your storage has got advanced capabilities, we can manage those just like any other backup event, including getting data out of those snapshots in a more efficient way than you might be able to with native capabilities. We also obviously plug into secondary storage. We've got deep integrations with the leading purpose-built backup appliances, dedupe appliances, the data domains, the exagrids, the HPE appliances of the world, and others as well. So that's the really quick overview of what Veeam means when we talk about cloud data management and our mission to be the leader in cloud data management. Let's look in a little bit more detail about the two questions that we're going to be focusing on in today's talk. So question number one, how can I protect the data of my remote workers? And we're going to talk about Veeam Backup for Office 365. Obviously, we're in the midst of a historic transition to remote work all around the world. The reason for that is no surprise to any of us. We're dealing with the fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic. And that's had some other consequences as well. Gartner had a conference back in May. Uh, they've been updating this pretty steadily. Their estimates back in May were that we wouldn't see 2019 spending levels in Europe again until late 2022. Some geographies, it's even worse. It could be as late as 2024 if their estimates are right about Latin America. So we're probably all going to be getting used to doing more with less for some number of years. Um, at the same time, the needs that we have around compliance and security have not gone away. We still have to invest more in those areas because, as we all know, privacy regulation, other kind of governance is only growing and it's growing more important. And there are new regulations coming out all over the world, not just GDPR anymore, not even just the California Consumer Privacy Act anymore, but CCPA version two will probably be with us after the November election here in the United States. And in addition to security and governance, we have all had to make a historic transition to digital transformation to remote work forced by the pandemic. I think that probably all of us heard Satya Nadella's quote, the CEO of Microsoft back in April, when he said, we have seen two years of digital transformation in two months. We're going to dig into that a little bit more. But there's been a huge transition to digital modernization, to providing remote work, to providing remote services to our customers or for, for public sector entities, governments, to our, to our citizens, to our constituents. What's interesting is that even before COVID-19 was on the radar, when industry analysts ask organizations, what do you foresee, what workloads do you see going to the public cloud in 2020? And I love this survey because this is from 2019 before anyone had heard of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
42% said, we're gonna move our office productivity. So our OneDrive, our Office 365 type apps up to the cloud. 27% said, we're gonna be moving our email up to the cloud. So overwhelmingly, two of the top four are Office 365 workloads. And again, this is before the pandemic. Let's fast forward to June. Again, Satya Nadella, back in April, we have seen two years of digital transformation in two months. These are the numbers around that, specifically around Office 365. There's now over 258 million O365 users. In April alone, Microsoft saw more than 200 million Teams meeting participants in a single day. They generated over 4 billion meeting minutes in a single day. There's over 75 million active Teams users now. And just to cite one company, Accenture, has over 500,000 Teams users themselves. And of course, all this is great. It's let us work remotely during the pandemic, securely, without endangering our health. It's all helping us to do more with less the way that we're going to be needing to do. But it's also got risks attached to it. The transition to remote work has really increased the threat surface for cyber attacks. And there's several reasons for that. When we work remotely, we're using remote devices, our own home computers. Those home computers might not be uh, patched with security patches to the same level that our work devices are. They might not even have operating systems on them that are continuing to be patched by the manufacturer. We might have workers at home using Windows 7, for example, still, and there, there aren't patches that are coming out for it, right? It's reached its end of life. So it's a real concern. Um, home routers are another big concern. Probably a lot of you saw the articles this past spring and early summer talking about most of the major consumer router brands having unpatched serious security vulnerabilities in them. By the way, my Netgear router was one of those. I had to turn off remote administration and I've subsequently upgraded it because of that. So it's a real threat. It's a very big concern for our users. And some of our users don't even have the luxury of fast internet at home and they're relying on public Wi-Fi with all the risks that go along with that. So there's a lot to be concerned about in terms of remote work. The threat surface is bigger. Around O365 specifically, that's concerning because O365 is the main attack vector. Office productivity apps are the main attack vector that malware takes to get into our environments. This is from Kaspersky Labs 2019 malware survey. And if you look, 65.5% uh, of the attacks that they noted used Microsoft Office as the, as the attack vector that they got into users' computers with. That's how the malware got onto the workstations, got onto the desktops and laptops. So what do we have? We have the huge expansion in Office 365. We have the huge expansion in remote work with a lot bigger attack surface, a lot bigger threat surface because of that. And we have Office 365 being the main attack vector that malware gets into your environment with. So let's dig deeper into how Microsoft and Office 365 natively protect your data and what the responsibilities are of us as customers of Office 365. Anyone who's certified on any cloud platform as an admin has seen some variant of a shared responsibility model, whether it's AWS, whether it's Azure, whatever the cloud provider is, they all have this kind of a graph that delineate for any given service what the provider's responsibilities are and what our responsibilities as customers are. It's very clear for Office 365. Microsoft is responsible for the infrastructure and Microsoft does a great job at that. Things like cross-zone replication, where you get data out of your geographic area, the uptime, the availability that Microsoft puts in place, and Microsoft's anti-malware capabilities are probably way ahead of what a lot of us had in our own data centers. There's a reason that these services are getting so popular. But that doesn't change the fact that Microsoft is very clear that we as customers own our own data. 
It's our responsibility to make sure that it's safe. It's our responsibility to make sure that if we have a requirement to get it back to a given point in time or to comply with any kind of regulatory framework, that we do that. And again, they're pretty clear about that. Let's look at the default retention policies that go along with Office 365 services. These can be changed depending on the level of O365 subscription that you have, but that tends to be a kind of laborious process, and a lot of users don't do that. The default retention settings for inbox or folder data is sitting in your inbox for two years and then moving to archive. That's not another copy, that's moving it to archive. Deleted items by default are retained for 30 days in the recycle bin and then permanently deleted. That can be extended, but you have to go in and do that very consciously to make that longer. Auto archive data we've talked about already. Deleted items in SharePoint and in OneDrive. There's a two-stage process for that. They tend to, after being deleted, they stay in the first stage recycle bin for a month and then another couple of months in the second stage recycle bin and then permanently deleted. And if you have an account, an employee who leaves the company, uh, by default, their data is going to be kept for 30 days, and then it's going to be permanently deleted as well. None of this is a knock on Microsoft. They're very clear about what their default policies are. And it's great to use it. There's a reason it's growing so fast. But you have to understand what you're getting and what your responsibilities as a customer are. You have to read through this. The reason that Veeam, and we're not alone, there are other solutions out there in this space as well, the reason that Veeam provides a backup solution for Office 365 is that we let you control retention exactly as you did when your Exchange, when your SharePoint, when your file services sat on-prem. You had worked with your legal team, with your compliance team. You knew what your responsibilities were to keep data. The key thing when you make the transition to a great service like Office 365 is not to forget that you've still got that responsibility when you go there. And you need to figure out exactly how long you need to keep things and what your restore capabilities are. How granular do I need to be? Do I need to be able to get back, for example, to a specific point in time? Microsoft is very clear that recycle bins are not made for point in time restores. If I'm hit with a audit or with a regulatory inquiry, or if I have lawyers for an opposing party in a lawsuit come to me and say, we need to see exactly what files this person had in his inbox and in his OneDrive folder, what files these 10 officers of the corporation had on this day five years ago. So restore that, put it in a zip file and give it to us. That is not a capability that Microsoft natively offers. And as you can see here, they're very clear about that, right? I'll also point out, Microsoft's SLAs are great. They have very good service level agreements around the service that they provide with Office 365. And once again, the availability and uptime that they offer is typically way better than what we used to get on premises when all of us did that stuff on prem. But their SLAs cover uptime. They cover the availability of the service there are not service level agreements against data loss. Microsoft does not accept data liability for data loss. It is on us to make sure that if the unthinkable happens and there's a significant outage in a data center, or as we just talked about, if we've got a requirement to get data back to a given point in time because of legal issues or because of regulatory issues, that we can do that. Industry analysts are totally clear about this, by the way. This isn't just us as a vendor saying this. International Data Corporation, IDC, they are a leading industry analyst firm. This is a quote from their analyst, Archana Venkatraman. And basically, you can see, it's very clear, without backup, Office 365 customers are exposed. Microsoft is clear about it. They lay it out in black and white. Analysts get it. But the truth is, a lot of Microsoft customers are still not clear on this, okay? Microsoft customers, when, when we ask, and this is from a Veeam survey, uh, our data protection trend survey that was released in June of this year, we heard from 19% of our customers that they rely on Microsoft's backup for O365 data. There is not a Microsoft backup as we normally understand it for O365. 57% said we're not doing anything. So 76% are exposed. If 
they had someone come to them and say, we need you to get back these 10 or 20 people's data as it was two years ago, three years ago, five years ago, they couldn't do it. They would not have a solution for it. Okay. Now you might say, all right, so they're exposed. But what are the real issues that come up? Is this really a problem? Well, at Veeam, we think that there are some pretty significant reasons why you should consider this. Accidental deletion is a thing. Uh, I think that we probably all saw in the news not terribly long ago, uh, news that a big firm deleted the private history chat for their company. Uh, that's the sort of thing that does happen. User error is still the leading cause of data loss for most organizations. There's also retention policy confusions and gaps. On premises, when we had our data in our data centers, we had thought through this and most of us had a pretty good plan around it. The trouble is that in rushing to maybe earlier than we thought, given the pandemic, get our data up into cloud services, we might not have taken that same maturity along with us. So there's still, when, when I talk with Veeam customers, when I talk with other customers who haven't adopted Veeam, there's still a lot of confusion around retention after they move to the cloud. There's internal security threats. A young man in the UK went to prison back in December of, of last year for because he was angry about having been fired, uh, deliberately deleting both production workloads and as many backups as he could on the way out the door. This is something that happens. It's something we have to think about. Of course, there's also malware. Uh, at our Veeamon conference back in June, we actually demonstrated uh, using uh, script to encrypt mapped OneDrive folders uh, and simulate a ransomware attack on OneDrive. So it is absolutely something that's possible to happen. Again, no knock on Microsoft, their security is better than most of us had on premises, but it is something that we have to guard against as admins. There's legal and compliance requirements. We've talked about that quite a bit. And there's the benefit of being able, if you've got a good backup solution, to manage through a single pane of glass with a single set of policies, my workloads that have moved up into the cloud and my workloads that are still on premises. Because overwhelmingly, what we find when we talk to customers is that they have on-prem workloads still running and they've got multiple clouds that they're taking advantage of for things that they've moved up to the public cloud. Now, again, these are good reasons. How often do these kind of things really happen? Well, the answer is they happen a lot. 37% user error accidental deletion. These are what forms of data loss have you experienced within the cloud, okay? So it absolutely happens quite a bit that folks run into accidental deletion. People also run, of course, into malware. They run into uh, security gaps or, or retention policy gaps where they thought they were keeping things longer than they were and were surprised when they needed to get data back. But these things do happen in the real world. Again, this is from Veeam's Data Protection Trends Survey. It came out in June of this year. That survey is a large worldwide survey of 1,500 IT leaders about what they're doing about cloud, about data protection, around all these topics we're talking about today. So let's look at how Veeam helps. We released earlier this year Veeam Backup for Microsoft Office 365 version 4. Actually, version 5 is in beta right now, and I'll talk with you a little bit about what's included in the, in the upcoming version 5. But available for our customers today in version 4 is the ability to back up your OneDrive, your SharePoint Online, your Exchange Online, and your on-premises Microsoft apps through one console. You can protect all of it using one application, one set of policies, procedures, storage resources. With version four of Veeam Backup for Office 365, we added the ability to support object storage. What that means is that you can deploy your Veeam Backup and Replication servers, the data movers themselves, all the backup infrastructure, and the storage either on-premises or in the cloud, or both. I can back up my O365 to Amazon. I can back it up to Azure Blob Storage. I can go to IBM Cloud. I can go to other S3 compatible storage. And I can go to S3 compatible storage that's on premises as well. If I want to deploy Cloudian or another one of you know, the leading uh, S3 compatible storage solutions that's out there for on premises. Because Veeam has been doing this for a while, we not only give you the ability to back up 
basically any way that you want, but we also give you the ability to restore data with a lot of flexibility. We are not locked in, as some of our competitors who have software as a service only solutions, to just giving you one or two ways to recover data. In fact, because we've been doing this for a long time, for Office 365 alone, we've got 25 different ways that you can get your Exchange data back, that you can get your SharePoint data back, whether it's on-premises or in the cloud. And the same thing is true for your OneDrive for Business files. So if I need to export a PST, if I need to export a CAB or a zip file, I can do that. If I need to restore a whole SharePoint infrastructure or a whole Exchange infrastructure, I can do that or I can just restore one mailbox or one mail item or one given site. So all those flexibilities are there for me around Office 365. And again, back to being a leader in cloud data management, it's not just that we're protecting the cloud resources, but we can send that protection up into the cloud and even across clouds as well. So let's talk about the other topic, the other question that we're gonna to touch on today around Veeam, and that is, okay, how can I defend my organization against ransomware? And maybe even more especially, how can I take advantage of the cloud in doing that? I think that we've all seen the statistics around ransomware. Uh, there are companies that have gone out of business, pretty big companies like TravelX declared bankruptcy several months ago because of their ransomware attack back in December and January of this year. Any of us who were traveling probably saw that TravelX was shut down during the month of January because of a big ransomware attack. They're not alone, of course. There's a number of other high profile attacks that have taken place. I'm not gonna read the statistics on this slide. They're from the Sophos 2020 antivirus report, but I'm just gonna point out point number four. One of the reasons that ransomware is such an issue now is because the attacks are growing much more sophisticated, okay? It is now commonplace, again, from Sophos's 2020 threat report, it is now commonplace for malware, not just to attack your production data, but to slowly spread over a course of weeks or months through as much of the network as it can, and to very selectively encrypt and target backup data before it begins to attack production data. And the Sophos quote is very clear, the bad guys understand that they're much more likely to have a ransom paid to them if they make sure to wipe out backups first. Veeam is there for our customers. We have had for years non-cloud ways to take care of this. And the reason that we've had that is that Veeam believes in the 321 rule for backups. Probably a lot of you all have heard this before. Veeam didn't invent it. The 321 rule for backups is that I should have three copies of my data. Okay, so that means my production copy and two more. That should be on two different media types. So it's not good enough to have my production storage array and to carve out a little piece on the same array and send my backups there. I need some other place that I'm sending my data. And the one rule is one of those backup copies needs to be offsite. Okay, so three copies of the data, two different media, one offsite. In particular, because of ransomware, we've expanded that lately with some pretty unique Veeam capabilities. That is, one of those copies should be offline. In other words, it should be not exposed to ransomware, even if the bad guys get a copy of my admin credentials and try to wreck my backups. And I should be able to validate that I have no errors in my backups when I take them. And again, these are all capabilities that Veeam offers especially around offline storage. We have supported for years tape, of course. We also were a leader in supporting replicated VMs, and you can replicate those, bring them offline, have a different security context, and protect yourself that way. We have deep snapshot integration, as I mentioned earlier on. Again, another security context, another layer of protection. There are some storage partners of ours who have snapshots that are themselves immutable. Uh, and so if you work with those folks for your on-premises storage, then you've got options for snapshots that can't be changed even if your admin credentials get hacked. And of course, there's solutions that are provided by our service providers. Veeam has many thousands of Veeam cloud service providers. And the advantage of working with a service provider 
is that they have a different security context for their admin systems, for their storage, for their servers. So even if you're compromised, they're not and your backups are safe. And if you want to go totally old school, of course, we support rotating hard disks as well and have for years. But to the cloud, Veeams began supporting with version 10 something called S3 object lock on storage. If you're not familiar with it, S3 object lock is just a way of, you know, it was pioneered by Amazon, hence S3. It's a way of locking S3 storage so that it can't be changed. And if you use compliance mode, which was specifically uh, brought about so that customers could point to regulators or point to auditors and say, we put this data here and we haven't changed it because we can't. That's what compliance mode does. It makes the data unchangeable even by the customer until the, the length of time that you specify has gone by. If you put data in S3 object lock in compliance mode, in particular, if you put backup data up there, it cannot be changed. It is absolutely safe from being corrupted, even by ransomware. Let's look at how Veeam takes advantage of that. For some time now, we have had the capability to do something, send data to something that we call cloud tier. Before version 10, so before February of this year, you could only move older copies of your data up to the cloud. With version 10, we introduced something called cloud tier copy. Cloud tier copy lets me immediately make a copy of my backup data and send it up to the cloud. Those copies in object storage can be made immutable, as we just talked about, so I can take advantage of the immutability in S3 compliant storage. And there's a lot of efficiencies built in so that if I have to restore that data from the cloud, my workloads are back up and running as soon as possible. We actually demoed at our Veeamon conference back in June the recovery of completely destroyed servers back from cloud storage and it was much more rapid than it would have been with, <clears throat> pardon me, than it would have been if we'd had to copy all that data back before bringing the workloads up because our instant restore capabilities give us the ability to start the workloads, to start the virtual machines as soon as enough data has downloaded to make that possible to do. So a lot of very, very strong capabilities around ransomware. There's actually a lot more capabilities than this. But this is the cloud integration. And so since we're at the cloud summit, it's it, this is what we chose to talk about today. But there's a lot more that we can talk about in terms of ransomware protection. Now that we've answered those two questions, let's answer another question. And that is, what's it like to work with Veeam? Is Veeam a partner you can trust? If you talk with Veeam customers, what you will hear is that Veeam has a strong focus. And we've had this for many years through, throughout the history of the product on three main things. We make the product simple, we make it flexible, and we make it reliable. And the reasons for that are pretty clear. If you've ever been a backup admin, and I have been a backup admin in my career, you will know that no backup admin has only one job. Your backup admin is also a server admin, he's a storage admin, he's a virtualization admin, now he might be a network and cloud admin as well. So the requirements for getting your data back when a bad thing happens, when you have a natural disaster, when you have ransomware or some other bad event, are that your product has to be simple, flexible, and reliable. That's the mark that we aim at. And over the years, we've been pretty fortunate that industry analysts have validated that we hit that mark. We have led in the Gartner Magic Quadrant. We've been in the Leaders Quadrant for the last four years. This year, 2020, we are highest positioned for avail av ability to execute. What that means is that all of the capabilities that we've talked about so far, our cloud capabilities, our integrations, our advanced storage integrations, the platforms we support, Veeam doesn't just talk a good game. Veeam actually leads in making those things usable by our customers and something that they can rely on even in the middle of a natural disaster or a ransomware attack. And Gartner's validated that by saying, we actually can do it. We're highest in ability to execute. What analysts think is good, but what customers think is more important. I'm not gonna read all of the revenue and partner numbers here. I just wanna focus on the number on the bottom. That 75 is Veeam's net promoter score. 
If you're not familiar with it, Net Promoter Score is just a statistically validated measure of whether a company's customers want to get away from them or want to stay with them. Veeam's customers are three and a half times the industry average in their approval of Veeam. Our Net Promoter Score is comparable to companies that have really, really loyal fan bases like Apple. Uh, there are other competitors in this space, folks who do the same kind of thing that Veeam does, who have net promoter scores in the single digit. And again, that's just because we really care about making our products simple, flexible, and reliable so that our customers can count on them even in the middle of an emergency. This has just scratched the surface of some of the things that Veeam offers around cloud integrations. We've talked about our cloud integrations that help with ransomware. We've talked about our cloud integrations both protecting Office 365 and letting you send O365 backup data into the public cloud of your choice. If you would like more information, take a look at the on-demand recordings from our Veeam On Conference. I've mentioned it a couple of times now, our Veeam On Conference that happened back in June. All of the recordings from that conference are still available. They are available on demand. And if you want to learn a lot more detail about implementing Veeam for Office 365, about scaling Veeam, about hardening your backup infrastructure against ransomware, we have in-depth deep dives with Veeam technical experts and with customers who can talk about what went right, what went wrong, what they learned when they had to deal with this kind of emergency. So please do check it out. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of the Europe Clouds Summit have a good day.